Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Zero Span Measurements with the Rodian Schwartz FPC. In this presentation, we'll show you how to make zero span measurements using a Rodian Schwartz FPC series spectrum analyzer. This presentation assumes a basic technical understanding of spectrum analyzers and zero span. If you're not familiar with these topics, or if you'd like a brief refresher, it might be a good idea to watch the presentations Understanding Basic Spectrum Analyzer Operation and or Understanding Zero Span before continuing with this presentation. Setting up a zero span measurement on the FPC is not that much different than making standard power versus frequency measurements. We set the center frequency as usual, but set span equal to zero. We'll also need to choose an appropriate resolution bandwidth. Remember that resolution bandwidth is a critical setting for making measurements in zero span mode. We normally want to set the resolution bandwidth slightly larger than the width of the signal we're measuring. To familiarize you with some of the different applications in zero span, we're going to show how zero span is used on the FPC to perform three different tasks, an audio demodulation, a channel power measurement, and an analysis of a pulse signal's envelope. We'll start with audio demodulation. Let's review the procedure for demodulating audio on a spectrum analyzer. We first set our frequency and enter zero span mode. Then we place a marker on the signal of interest, change the marker function to demodulation, choose AM or FM, and select an appropriate resolution bandwidth. Remember that in order to avoid distorted audio, the chosen resolution bandwidth needs to be wider than the signal and any sidebands. The FBC has both a headphone jack as well as a built-in speaker for listening to the demodulated audio. Let's assume that we've correctly configured our center frequency and set the span to zero. Our power versus time is displayed as a line, and we can set our marker anywhere along this line. The next step is choosing Marker Demodulation. After we choose the correct modulation type, AM or FM, we should begin hearing a continuously demodulated audio signal. Note that we may need to increase the volume and or use headphones, especially if working in a noisy lab environment. Now let's look at measuring channel power using zero span. As before, we set the center frequency, set span equal to zero, and then choose our resolution bandwidth. Because we're making a power measurement, we also need to set our detector type to RMS, since this is the proper detector to use when measuring power. Assuming that the power of the channel is relatively constant, channel power should appear as a more or less horizontal line on the power versus time display. We can either read the value from the vertical axis or use a marker to obtain a more precise value. One important parameter when using zero span to measure channel power is sweep time. Generally speaking, increasing the sweep time will improve the stability and repeatability of our measurement results. The last zero span application we're going to look at in this presentation involves pulse signals. Specifically, we'll be using zero span to view the pulse power versus time envelope so we can examine both the pulse shape as well as determine basic pulse parameters such as pulse width and pulse interval. As always, we'll need to configure center frequency and set the span equal to zero. Because pulse signals tend to have wide spectral content, we'll most likely need a wider resolution bandwidth setting. Too small of a resolution bandwidth can lead to rounded edges or distorted pulse envelopes. And lastly, we'll also need to configure a trigger to freeze the pulse signal on our display. Assuming that we've sent our center frequency and are in zero span mode, the next thing to do is to set the sweep time. The correct sweep time depends on the type of signal we're measuring and on how much of that signal we want to see on the screen. Changing the sweep time essentially zooms in and zooms out of the displayed signal. Remember that in order to have a stable trace or to freeze the trace on the screen, we need to set a trigger. One option is using an external trigger signal, but in most cases a simple video trigger is sufficient. We define the video trigger level as a percentage, often by experimentation. The correct level for obtaining a stable signal or a non-moving signal will vary by signal type. That said, there's usually a fairly wide range of trigger signals that will work, especially if the signal-to-noise ratio is high. Once we've configured our sweep time and set a trigger, we can also use markers to make various pulse measurements. 
For example, we can easily measure pulse width, here 2 milliseconds, and pulse period, here 10 milliseconds, using markers. Let's summarize what we've covered. Zero span can be used for many different measurement types, such as the three examples we saw in this presentation, audio demodulation, channel power, and measurements of pulsed or time-varying signals. In all of these measurements, note that proper setting of the resolution bandwidth is critical in getting good results. Markers are also a useful tool in power versus time measurements. This concludes our presentation, Zero Span Measurements with the Rodian Schwartz FPC. If you'd like to learn more about zero span measurements or other spectrum measurements, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.